there's a sound and fury in the everyday routine of getting from... But closer than we think is still another place. Quiet place. The sanctuary of a silent city. of us who drive on two wheels, the odds are five times as great that we'll reach this silent city as it is for those who drive on four. Years of careful research have taught us many of the reasons for that deadly five to one ratio. Item. In spite of the rapidly increasing number of motorcycles, the average motorist is still not used to them, doesn't expect them around, and isn't really looking out for them. So the cyclist is faced with the same serious problem of not being seen that faced the drivers of small foreign cars when they first appeared. cycle is seemingly in plain view, even a small object raised in front of the driver's eyes can completely block out a cycle directly in front of him. There's no doubt that a man or woman on two wheels is dwarfed by any car or truck and is definitely outweighed. Therefore, it's only logical that a cyclist must see and be seen. The best way to be seen is by wearing high visibility protective clothing in white, red, or shocking pink. But don't depend on that. Drive defensively. Ride as if the other drivers can't see. The full meaning of see and be seen and the impact of relative size have been documented in a series of crash tests conducted at the Institute of Transportation and Traffic Engineering of the University of California. Machines weighing from 200 to 500 pounds were used at speeds of 20, 30, and 40 miles per hour. In every case, the instrumented dummy cyclists indicated serious injury or fatality. The size of the cycle didn't matter. Everything back of the fork indicated good deceleration factors. As a result of the tests, it was felt that passive restraints, such as padding to resist forward movement, could be designed to greatly reduce injuries in front-end collisions of motorcycles. For the 
best safety devices are still your own knowledge, skill, and good common sense. A logical place to acquire or improve all three is at a good school. Because on two wheels, there's no protective steel around you, all experienced cyclists know and beginners learn that you must wear your protection. Gloves, an approved helmet, goggles that'll keep stones and bugs out of your eyes, shoes or boots that support and cover ankles, and protective clothing, preferably in bright colors. Dress defensively and drive defensively. And defensive driving starts with getting to know the fundamentals thoroughly. That comes only through practice. Many communities provide excellent instruction through their traffic safety or driver education departments. Following cars, keep to the left of the lane. The driver ahead can't see you if you ride on the right. A big part of defensive driving involves space. Space between you and whatever's up ahead. You need that space to act and to react. And this applies not only on freeways, but also on surface streets where sudden stops or lane changes can mean a tailgater bouncing off a bumper. So it's a good idea to keep checking your rear view mirror. Keep them off your tail. Defensive driving means more than just being careful. You have to plan ahead. That simply means knowing what's going on up there ahead of you and what you will do if. On a motorcycle, you have a big plus. Unrestricted vision in all directions. There's a ball, and it's usually followed by a child. Plan ahead. You won't have time to ad lib while it's happening. 75% of all accidents involving motorcycles occur at intersections. Remember that even a slight obstruction, such as the window frame of a car, can momentarily obstruct that driver's view of you. In addition to compliance with the law, a simple courtesy at an intersection will keep you and the other fellow from achieving a tie in the middle of the street. Usually, even if not always, courtesy is returned by courtesy. But if there is a tie on a motorcycle, you lose. But there are many ways in which you win if you own a motorcycle. Cycles are relatively inexpensive and economical to drive. They're easy to park. There's that very personal relationship between the rider and his machine, the feel of the road and the closeness to the world around you. Enjoying your machine. Don't lose respect for it. Don't be overconfident. Remember, plan ahead. Look ahead.
There are potholes in almost any road. No problem for a car, but a dangerous hazard for a motorcycle. A motorcycle gives you the freedom to explore areas you would hesitate to take a car. But loose dirt or gravel can be treacherous. Take it slow. Take it easy. What might seem like fun could leave you lying in the road with help far away and a long time in coming. Keep it on the rubber. Water or an oil slick can be extremely dangerous, especially at a sharp curve or street corner. Planning ahead is important to everyone on the road. To anyone on two wheels, it's a way of life. Experienced cyclists know this rule. If it is not followed, chances of becoming experienced are very slim indeed. Fun and caution make for good times. But the fun is apt to prove a problem for those friends or even strangers who want to borrow your bike. You know, just try it out. Here's a thought to keep in mind. About 25% of all accidents happen on borrowed machines. Shakespeare said it, neither a lender nor a borrower be. Enjoy the fun and freedom that a motorcycle can give you, but know your machine and respect it. See and be seen, ride defensively. Use your plan ahead. A lot of people have a negative feeling about motorcycles and those who ride them. Right or wrong, that feeling places an additional burden on everyone who rides a cycle. You're on your own. You and your common sense. is a saying that flyers use. There are old cyclists and bold cyclists. But there are no old, bold cyclists. Have a long way to go. Have fun.